All right, hello everyone. Here we're back for a golf class tutorial here. This hole number eight of the Paris course. So let me go ahead and get my screenshot. And you draw in this line right here. This is usually right around where the cutoff is for the two clubs. Once again, you'll have to have two shots available pretty much theme for this course mm -hmm. and more so than anything the tour as well so the primary shot that you'll use is the um, wood shot for the most part and the sniper needs to at least be a seven minimum Guardian won't need to be very, you know, Guardian 2, somewhere in there. Hammerhead, it's going to need to, you know, right when you unlock it, it's not going to quite have probably the, the backspin that you want. So let's say, you know, Hammerhead 4, it's where you get that backspin up. Or similarly, you should be able to hit this shot with a Cat 1. But, you know, I always list in order of preference, um, priority. So, um, you know, you see cat towards the bottom there. That should be, you know, kind of your last resort, even at a seven. Uh, you know, that's the, only that's the only point where, you know, it kind of can potentially start to move up. However, for the shootouts, it's not going to be, it's not really going to give you an advantage. So, um, you know, more so for the advantage that you get from the Cat 7, for example, will be in the tour to where you could potentially get an eagle somebody couldn't, not on the shootout. So let's take a look here at uh, the first wood shot. I usually try to land very close to the top of this shadow here. And what I'll try to make my hop do here is kind of, you know, land and then hop and then just kind of dribble on to the front. I'll usually keep the ball guide short of the hole. If you have it running towards the hole, you're probably going to go through too much. Um, and when you're hitting this shot more times than anything, um, it's going to be tailwind only. So I'll never use this shot for a headwind. And partly because of the way that this line is set up and, all, um, you know, part of the other reason being that, uh, you know, I'll try to make sure that I play with Thor 6 or 7. 6 is, you know, a point that you really want to get to. Uh, alternatively, you know, the Epoch 6 or 7 is going to be listed below. And then the extra mile is going to be kind of a last resort here. And, um, you know, you just don't have enough length to really even bring in other clubs. You, you may be able to get through this tour with Rock 8, maybe, but it's really not even worth mentioning. But it would kind of, you know, kind of go up the priority scale if you were able to bring that because you'd be able to hit very close. Uh, you know, it'd be basically better than an Apocalypse on all these par threes. So Rock 8 kind of is very close to say where Pac 6 is. It's pretty much comparable, but it has a little bit better accuracy, a little bit less backspin. But this is the primary shot and what I'll usually do is as I mentioned, you know, you'll have to play your offset ball guide in this tour and the person that does that the best is the one that's going to do best on the shootouts. And typically win the hole will be the guy that can play the better offset. So a lot of times, you know, I'll try to, you know, since we're pretty much primarily playing a tailwind case, I'm going to have this ball guide kind of set up short of the hole. And then when it actually, the wind applies, then it actually is going to expand out and will potentially get up here. 
there is a false front. So you'll kind of have to master the amount that you can go short. And I kind of drew it exactly, you know, kind of towards the limits. Like this is kind of pushing what it should relatively look like. It's a very close representation and you won't see any rollout um, in the way that I have it set up. However, once the expansion happens, it actually starts to roll out. And uh, let's talk a little bit about the adjustment here for this shot. So in this case here, um, we're only talking t tail and side. Um, I'll, I'll use max plus 20, pretty much exactly on for both of these. So max plus 20%. And in terms of my spin, I usually um, try to shoot for about four on the side case. Is that right? Yeah. No, that's not right. Four on the four is pretty much as much as I'll do which will be the straight tailwind and all the way down towards 3.5 here. So 3.75 somewhere in here, 3.75. Keep in mind more so than the spins I'm giving you. Uh, land zone is going to be more in critical. Um, predicting that ball guide is going to be more predictable. The guy that can kind of visualize this ball guide the best um, it's going to beat the guy that knows the spins inside and out. So um, that's going to pretty much work for all tours. So um, that's what you're going to kind of want to uh, focus on mastering more so than what I'm basically giving you here, but this is going to give you kind of an overview of the shots that you want to be doing. And I'll never, on any headwind case, um, there's even times on this side win case, you know, I'll just set up my Thor hammer right here and do this backspin shot even for the side wind because it's just that much easier. So the other shot is, you know, kind of right here and you'll just kind of crank up this backspin and you can do it with a puck. You can do it with extra mile. The extra mile is the hardest to do it. Most guys go through um, because you kind of got to you got to kind of visualize below min this min line here to do it with the extra mile it's going to be very hard no matter what you're pretty much going to use max um, there's very very few cases where I've ever taken off max so for all these shots below here the answer is max and you just got to kind of tweak the landing zone just slightly as I mentioned you'll have to use with the extra mile your land zone will have to be a little bit more down here towards min towards below that that min line and the epoch you're pretty much set up kind of right on the edge and you know with this purple mark here the Thor 6 line um, there's almost no situation that Max is going to pull off the front of the green but I've had one instance where it almost did so um, you know you can get the wind up high enough it's just really going to uh you know take a lot of wind like uh you know 16 miles per hour 15 14 somewhere very very large straight into the face most angled winds you know all you'll need to do is you'll need to you know play the rings and what i usually use here is very close to uh mid on these cases so with these uh so in these two cases, we just kind of, so I'll usually use mid club and primarily that I'll use mid club right here. And then on this case up here, I'll pretty much use max. So it's going to be kind of a variance between mid and max on what I'm going to use. And it's just going to be kind of dependent upon what the wind angle is, how strong it is stuff like that. 
Um, on real small winds, you, it could be it could almost be as low as you know barely above um, min club if it was really really tiny. Because I think you can get it down to with a kingmaker ball, it could be as low as you know six point nine for example. And if you get the wind that small, you can pretty much just play it min and just call it a day. It's not going to overplay. However, when you get the double with that wind, that's when you start to, you know, really need it to uh, be cranking up a little bit, which could happen in this tour. So you just never really know the range, which makes it a little bit tough. But, you know, these adjustments kind of correlate to whatever, you know, wind that you get and what angle it's pointed at as to how much you're going to need to go there. And again, you know, you can, you know, just use these kind of loosely because you, you need to kind of vary them a little bit. The scale is dependent upon, you know, the magnitude of the wind. So something to be thinking about. But, you know, that pretty much covers the shots for you guys. Good luck with this hole and see you guys on the next one.